AR. This is a quick walkthrough on how to integrate Vault and GitLab, along with some of the changes that are coming in 15.0. Uh, so before I got started with this walkthrough, I used an AWS Quick Start to launch a HashiCorp Vault environment. So this is uh, located under AWS Quick Starts, and I just spun up a, a HashiCorp Vault on a new VPC. So some instructions on how to do that there. Now, from a workflow perspective, uh, when GitLab uh, CI job is fetching out into Vault, um, if it's needing to fetch a certain key, uh, key value pair, such as maybe a password to production or a staging environment, um, it's going to authenticate to the Vault environment through JWT. So within your CI job, you'll be able to fetch out any sort of secrets that you need. Um, so within that JWT method, I'll be able to fetch into Vault, authenticate, now there's three pieces that I'm gonna highlight and go in a little deeper here. The, the three components that I wanna show here is the role, policy, and secret. Secret, this is pretty obvious. This might be a KV uh, value uh, between staging. It might be a DB password of some sort. Now the role is going to be uh, an important part here. This is going to be um, what is the bounds on what this um, runner or this CI job can access. So in particular, there are certain claims available within the JD, JWT token, such as your project ID. Maybe I want to filter by project ID, environment, maybe a particular branch. Um, so those are just a couple that you can filter off of. Now the policy, that's going to be your read and write capability. So what you can uh, fetch into your uh, actual KV and what actually has access to that. So uh, a little further into that. So in my example here, I have a staging environment with a database password store. So I can quickly see that um, this is the commands I ran in here. In my policy, I only want to give read access to this particular staging uh, directory. And then also uh, within this policy, I'm sorry, this role, I have a, a role called my project staging role. So I will use this to um, authenticate and reach out into the vault environment. Um, I have a staging role and a production role. Uh, make note of the environment here. So the staging, this is the the bound claim that I'm filtering off of. And we'll show that in the CI job here shortly. So if I go into my vault instance, um, I can go into my KV V2 path. Make note if you're using the native uh, secrets integration. Uh, and what I mean by that is if you're going to be using a secrets colon and then fetching specific uh, key value pairs, uh, we only support the KV V2 engine at the moment. So in this case, I can see I have a staging uh, database password. Um, and if I need to review that, I can do that. So my database, and then also for my production environment, I have a very simple prod password. All right, so looking at that, the other part here is I have a policy uh, created for both production and staging. So in this case, this is just a read only function. And then if I go into my access, um, this is the way I authenticate out um, between both the CI uh, job JWT token and also the native secrets integration. So if I view this configuration, I can go in and look that there is one, a JWKS URL. So these are going to be um, public keys available to allow you to decrypt that token. So it communicates back to gitlab.com there from Vault. Then you'll also see a bound issuer. Uh, make note of this for the v2 environment this will change so i'll highlight that in just a little bit so if i go into my pipeline here so i have two jobs set up one using the raw token so what i mean by raw token is there is a ci job jwt um, this is the original um, uh, implementation that allows to set up a vault there's now a v2 that allows you to hook into different cloud providers such as aws or gcp um, so in this particular job, I have a vault image set up. Um, within the script here, I have uh, my vault instance, so link or URL to that um, for my vault token. So this is allowing me to uh, authenticate out through the GWT method. Keep note that I'm passing in a role here, so I just want to fetch out uh, my staging credentials. Um, and then I'm also going to go ahead and uh, retrieve that uh, database password. So you'll see that um, being able to be used in this CI job. Now, the second job here is this is what I call our, our native integration. So the secrets um, function, this is available on the premium tier or above. So in this case, we can quickly see that um, I have a path that I'm going to fetch similar to my staging. 
Um, I'm going to fetch my production database password. Make note of here, this is where the, the KVB2 is mounted. So there is documentation on properly using this. Um, and then also between both of these jobs, I have an environment staging and environment production. This is where that bound claims comes to be when you're using, in this case, your staging role or your production role. So if I go into a pipeline that's already created here, I can quickly look into my raw token, see that perform commands, and I now have access to my database password. Again, this is using the JWT login and then doing a vault KV um, through the, the vault image there. Um, now make note, I did get a permissions denied error uh, against my production um, uh, KV store here because I did not pass a production role here. So make note of that. And then if I go into my secret state of integration, um, you'll see if you do that, you'll see there is a function on line five here using vault secret resolver. Um, so you'll see that um, if you are using the native secrets integration, in this case, I have my prod password available to me in the CI job. So that is the quick walkthrough on the integration there. Now, um, a few things on the V2 changes. There were a couple uh, changes or additions to the, the JWT token. So if I go back into um, the instructions here, there is a w JWT payload that is injected into the CI job. So if I look at this uh, payload here, um, this has um, an issuer. Um, and then also there's two things that are uh, not shown here, but one is the audience. So this was needed for our cloud providers. And then also um, there is a subscriber. So this will be additional information that you can filter if you're using something like AWS or GCP. So if I go back into function here. So um, one thing on the V2 change, um, there will be an HTTPS added into the issuer. Um, and then there's audio, also an audience added. Now, why this is relevant um, to Vault is there's going to be a couple changes that you need to do. Uh, so if I pull up my functions here, I'm going to add a bound audience to my role. So if I take a quick look into my staging role, I can see now that I've added this, what will happen in the air is, say if you try to go and use that V2 token, it's going to say that now there's an audience provided, you need to now include the uh, bound audience. So I'm going to go ahead and write that to this function. And just double check that that went through. All right, so that is now part of the JWT token. Now, the other part I want to include here is the bound issue. So in the V2 change, there is HTTPS that is added. So I'm going to make sure that that is included in the bound issuer. So if I go back and run this pipeline again, what I should see on that raw token in particular is there is um, going to be a couple errors that pop up. We'll make sure to add these into the documentation. So you'll see one um, in the V2 token is an audience claim. So if it's found, uh, Vault will say, hey, you need to add a body bound audience to that, um, to that policy or I'm sorry, to that role. And then also if the HTTP is not included in the issue, you will also see this code 400. So I should see those in my pipeline here. Yep, so issuer is not included. Now, if I go into my JWT token, That a second to run. So if I go back into my configuration here,
I should see my bound issuer now has HTTPS included. I go into my pipeline. I should see now that the V2 can now fetch against that now that I've added those two properties. Now for the native integration, um, at the start of 15.0, we will start to include the V2, or V2 token um, injected in here. Um, so the only side on your part um, as a customer is to update that issuer and also the, um, the bound audience um, for your role. So those are the two changes and those will be documented for you to review. That is all for this walkthrough. Thank you.